What did we see? Um, what did we see with our first friend here? What's that? Too much elderly. Too much what? Seldomly. Celebrate. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought you said celery. I did too. I was going to say, you can see they eat celery in there. <laughs> They're not digesting the protein very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, the first thing that you notice is that basically everything on this side is good. It's this back end. Uh, it's, it's pretty well out of whack. Um, I mean, these, these numbers together, not only do we have a decent spread here, right? But I mean, total together, that's a very high number. But it's still within range as a high number to be in a zone of. Mm -hmm. So, probably what we're seeing here is somebody that's going through some sort of uh, healing reaction or cleansing reaction. You guys see that? Uh, you know, it's th in this case, this is a good number. And this might be somebody that you would work with that might come in and this might be, you know, the second set of numbers or the fifth set of numbers, but it usually will not be the first set of numbers. If this was the first set of numbers that you were working with, let's say, um, let's say this person was about 20 years old. Would it be different than if they were like 80 years old? It would make a difference in the case of somebody that is... Uh, How fast they're going to re respond. Well, if this was a first reading and it was, say, a 20-year-old, we would probably have somebody that was maybe in the midst of a cold or flu. If they were older, it would be kind of a messed up test. Because it really wouldn't make too much sense if this was, unless they were maybe a healthy person that was going through some sort of a healing crisis. But if they were older and this was just an average test, eh, we have a problem because they don't line up. The two numbers don't make them, you know, wouldn't be a good picture altogether. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, what, what kind of recommendations, or what do you, what do you think? Uh, give me some other stuff that you might have worked out on that. Anything? You could give them double light magnesium and enzymes. Magnesium and enzymes. Yeah, the, the magnesium or the dolomite for, for pulling this down, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, and the enzymes would work on that as well. Um, now, remember this whole thing about uh, dominance and right and left side? Now, you're going to have to work with stuff like that and, and find out whether that stays true, okay? Because uh, you might not... That will only be like a tendency. That won't be something that is definite and written in stone, you know. Like this would be right side of the body, left left side of the mind, right side of the body, left side of the body. Um, what, so what, 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 what did say you that say? again? Nitrate, uh, high nitrate, would, <coughs> yeah. with Reeves theory, would be more something affecting the left side of the brain and therefore having more trouble or would be showing more pronounced trouble in the right part of the body. You would generally, um, you know, have a sclera reading or something in conjunction with this to really figure that out. But, uh, conversely, if it was a high ammonia, you would see more trouble in the right, therefore showing the left. Does that make sense? Okay. You're going to have to work on that as individuals because sometimes it really just won't won't pay true or, or come out true, okay? Another thought I got from reading uh, her book by the Doe, I just got the blank through and it said in there that Rand's recommended that you eat on a regular schedule. I started thinking that the enzymes are secreted on a regular schedule if you have a regular schedule and that might help with the digestion. Yeah, that would be uh, as far as bringing this down as well, right? right? Okay, okay, very good. Um, so we, go ahead. You also say that there is an excess heat loss. Heat loss. The heat loss in the HC. Because I was oh. trying to look in the, in the table, and then I saw there about maybe something also with the thyroid. 
Well, okay, like ultimately, like with this test, it, you know, like I said, really what we're looking at is somebody that appears to be that, kind of like going through a healing crisis. Uh, as far as the thyroid is concerned, these would be, if that was a consistent number, that would be a good number. Uh, he's probably got good reserves. And we would just verify this with another test on the road. Um, you know, that's that might change. Uh, we could be seeing somebody that would have a tendency towards to low blood sugar, but that's not necessarily something we would see from a first test on this. That would be something down the road. But you know how that block runs clear through. It is it is unusual to have somebody that you would do a first test and they would be, you know, just A right off the bat. So uh, yeah, healing range, magnesium, and um, and your enzymes are good. What type of calcium would be uh, good for this zone? Glutenate is what our book says. Glutenate is what the book says. Uh, what's that? Cal 2 actually. No, I'd probably stay with the Cal 2. Uh, well, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't get so caught up about that being just a little bit high. I would probably just move into the neutral calciums. Uh, men call and um, uh, even like your chelated ones in the sense of the aspartate. Um, I mean, you're going to find different ones. Like, like Andrea brought me some Ezorb. That would be a real good one for somebody in this range. It would have a very, very high absorption in this range. Mm -hmm. Okay. It also suggested um, a green drink, you know, in that list that we had. Well, I, I give just about everybody green drinks. Yeah. So, Me too. Yeah. So uh, you know, there's a whole. Okay, there's there's some things within like the Reams protocol that you're going to probably branch and do a few things to your own as well. So like with me, I make superfood. I give everyone superfood. Mm -hmm. um, you know. And you're going to give us the recipe or let us buy some from you, right? Well, I'll tell you where to buy it and all that. Um, oh, it I comes just, already made. Let me just put it all together. You can get pounds of them and put them in a, mm -hmm. you know, big big bowl and mix it up or take a cup of each one and put it in like a gallon container and shake it up. Is that cheaper to do it that way than Steve? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, what if, how would you compare effectiveness if somebody was to take the superfood versus to make a green drink from kale they buy at the grocery store? From the grocery store? Yeah. I think the superfood is going to be better than that. That kale is probably two weeks old by the time it's, you know, actually purchased, brought home in juice. Um, kale picked in the yard, like if you went out and cut it in comparison to this, uh, that would be far superior. Yeah. For years I've been making a green drink in the summertime when the herbs are fresh. I'll put plantain and uh, maybe uh, lemon balm and chickweed and uh, heal all, and two or three others, and maybe sassafras leaves or something like that. I take them in the house and wash them about that much for to make a quart. And I wash them and then I'll cut them up with scissors so they don't bind up in the blender. Then I'll put two cups of water in the blender and I'll put, uh, slowly I'll feed the leaves through, turn the blender on slow, feed it through and when I get the leaves all in there and partly chopped up, then I turn on high speed. Then I, uh, I add two more quarts of water after pretty well, I'm sorry, two more cups of water to make a quart. And then I strain it and uh, keep the juice. I, I put the herbs on side. I use it on a poultice on my short knees or something like that. And uh, the juice, I put it back in the blender. I put the juice of a lemon and uh, a couple tablespoons of honey and a banana. And blend it, blend it up. It's super delicious. He made one for us when he was here last time. That was very good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. it's a good. I mean, I can put aloe vera in it and it tastes delicious. Yeah, and, and something in, in the area, you know, like like even a uh, barley grass juice or something like that. That's going to be dehydrated and it's going to be uh, not the same thing. Like even good dehydrated wheatgrass juice powder. It's not going to be anywhere near as effective as if you had took wheatgrass and just juiced it and drank it. I, I think you all would probably see but that. But this is fresh picked and you drink it within 10 minutes and no poison spray, no commercial fertilizers or anything. And it's basically free. All it costs you is a banana and half a lemon. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. 
All right, can we move uh, next number? Mm -hmm. You guys pretty confident with that one? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, what do we see here in this? Um, give me some ideas. She probably has low blood sugar because the other readings, like the salts are high and mm -hmm. the ureas are high. Yeah, okay, that's good. Good comment. Anything else? How, how's, uh, how's the bowel? Alkaline? Well, it's, you know, she's got more of a tendency, if you balance out those numbers, to be, be in the uh, alkaline range. So, it's interesting because the, the saliva is actually a little bit acid, mm -hmm. right? But the, uh, the urine... Oh, the sorry, the, sal yeah, yeah. Yeah. the saliva is a bit alkaline, but the uh, urine is a bit acid. So, what, what would be going on in the, in the bowel? Going kind of fast. Yeah. Oh, aren't you supposed to average them all together and then come up with a six point eight, or, or am I doing that wrong? No, you are doing that right. You are doing that right. Would probiotics affect the bowel? Mm. Acidic. Mm. Would probiotics affect it? Uh, well, I mean, uh, probiotics are acidic in nature. Uh, okay, hey, look. Uh, what did she eat the day before, though? Did she eat a couple yeah. of steaks? <laughs> well, we don't have that information. I know, but you know, it's, you got to take it into consideration yeah. because yeah. if a person's going out for dinner and having four glasses of wine and a steak and a baked potato, six point two would look pretty high. Uh, would look pretty high for that mm -hmm. person. Yeah, I, I agree on that day. That. If they were here with you. But, okay, like what you're trying to do with the first test is ultimately get them to have a pretty normal diet, you know, uh, for a couple of days before you do this test. So if they're going to go out, like if it's their birthday of the day before, <laughs> you probably don't want to do the test the next day because they've probably done a few things outside of the norm with their dietary habit. Even if it's just eating a piece of cake, it is going to affect the numbers a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we want to just get an average number. Well, 7.1 on the saliva tells us that the liver is off, but I don't know about the bowel. How are you determining what this one Well, I mean, ultimately, this is only slightly acid for the, mm -hmm. for the bowel. This is not really anything mm -hmm. too critical. Mm -hmm. We would see some iodine trouble, and we would, uh, we would find this over time, so there might be some uh, body temperature trouble. With this high salt, and, and uh, low sugar, we would probably see a hypoglycemic tendency, uh, trouble with oxygen, night sweats, confusion. And the sugar readings, you know, it's not that, you know, they're going to change, um, you know, crazy, but they will change throughout the day. They will. They'll be up and down depending on how that person is, at the activity and the food. But it's more like blood sugar can change several times in an hour. Okay, the, the urine is not going to change as dramatically as that. And if it does, if it does like have white swings that are just tremendous, then that is a sign that we're having a real loss of reserve energy because it should be able to stay within a fairly decent zone. It should be at much up above a three, even if they had a lot coming in. So uh, anyway, that that's one thing I would like to do is see people be tested around 2 p.m. Uh, you know, if they, if most people eat at about noon, uh, I test them around two. I don't test after two because the test, well, I mean, I do, like, when people come on a evening, that's the only time I have to test, but I, I just say that this is a generalized test. I don't, you know, make too much out of it. Okay, uh. Steve, did you say one thing here about that, uh, the sugar one that it is a marker for a 24-hour period? Did I hear no, something like that? It's not going to be a mark for a 24-hour period. Like if you test most people in the morning, yeah. their blood sugar will actually be slightly low. Well, the average person will. Other people's will be higher, depending on like how late they ate that night. <laughs> but um, you're looking for something uh, not first morning, uh, a couple hours after a meal is eaten. You know, so we're getting more of an even keel. Like. If a person's in good health and they eat uh, a large bowl of oatmeal, you know, a substantial amount, that blood sugar should not raise exponentially. They should be able to tolerate that. 
Okay? I mean, their blood sugar will go up a little bit, but it should not go way out, you know, skyrocket way out.